before we a break for recess, we have one more presentation. And as you know, I'm incredibly proud to live here in Montgomery County. One of the most important reasons that I am proud to be here is the rich diversity of the community that surrounds us and one that I have benefited from personally on every level. The diversity brings with it a myriad of experiences, traditions, ideas, stories, food and art, which serve to enrich all of our lives. Montgomery County strengths, I believe, and I believe many of us here do as well, is truly derived from its diversity. So it should be no surprise that the council has made it a strong tradition of its own to celebrate this diversity and showcase just how incredible a place this is to call home and to build a home. So today I am excited to begin September with council's second consecutive commemoration of African Heritage Month, recognizing and celebrating the contributions of individuals who have brought aspects of African culture to our county and our nation. The African diaspora uh, makes up 15% of the county's immigrant population and represents the languages and cultures of 54 different countries. The diversity and rich cultural traditions that the African community brings to Montgomery County and the nation is an essential part of what fortifies our collective vision of prosperity for all. There is no better way to highlight the African influence in Montgomery County in the U.S then to introduce you to members of the community who exemplify the hard work, perseverance, and success of this community in the county. So today, after comments from my colleagues, we will be showing a short video segment created to showcase African art, dance, food, music, and traditional attire. For the arts, we are featuring Emmy-nominated musician Sheik Kamala Diabate from Mali, dancer and artist, director Michael Friend, and Ethiopian painter Salomon Asfal, uh, for food and culinary arts, Egyptian chef Iman Musa, Gambian chef Hatib Jouf, and food historian and writer Emily Deech. And finally, we will meet Nigerian, Nigerian fashion designer Usayo Shitu to discuss and, uh, the inspiration behind her work. I would also like to thank my colleagues on the council staff, specifically Joe, Tom, uh, Joe Thompson, and Mershai Salou for the incredible work they do producing these segments and make it possible for us to share these stories with you today. So with that, I will now turn it over to Councilmember Jawando to make some opening comments, followed by Councilmember Rice. Councilmember Jawando. Thank you, thank you, Mr. President, and, and uh, good morning, everybody. It really, really hurts my heart that I'm not physically there um, with you. Uh, I don't know if it was said before I joined this morning, but I, uh, I tore my Achilles over the weekend, mm. um, and, uh, in, and in some in some pain, and also not not mobile. So, uh, but thank thank goodness for the virtual technology allows me to be there. I'm really really happy about that. It reminds me of the the African proverb: if you want to go fast, go alone; if, if you want to go far, go together. Um, and uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be together with my colleagues in this format to to honor uh, African Heritage Month. I had a whole outfit planned. I was going to run it by the Nigerian designer and see what see what you thought. And uh, but uh, I'm going to have to save that for another day. Um, but uh, really excited that we're doing this. Um, Montgomery County has a really strong history, as Council President mentioned, uh, 14 years of being the national leader of declaring September African Heritage Month. Uh, we have a whole month of activities. Uh, Panifest is coming up. Uh, there's there's just so much going on. Uh, but I'm really proud that at the council, we took the step in this council for the first time to officially recognize and have this celebration last year. Um, it's important. Uh, our great diversity is our strength. It's also, as the previous conversation uh, you know, points to, is something that is a opportunity and a challenge for us to make sure we're living up to ensuring that everyone has the opportunity to thrive and use uh, their full God-given potential here in this uh, great county. Uh, certainly uh, my story, my dad immigrated here uh, after fleeing a civil war in Nigeria and found his way to Montgomery County, like so many African immigrants have done uh, for generations. Uh, and however you got here, uh, we are a large, diverse black community and African immigrant community. Uh, and it's just such a such a great, great community and a great, uh, in any given night in our county, you can have something going on that's a cultural uh, festival or 
important meeting uh, here in the county related to African immigrants, but also so many others. Um, and so it's really an honor to be here and highlight with my colleagues some great, great innovators uh, in the second fastest growing, uh, one of the fastest growing immigrant populations in our county uh, and really appreciate all the work that has gone, as was mentioned, uh, by our staff um, and by Merkai and everyone on our team to uplift this community and, and show some of the great things that are going on. So thank you, Mr. President, and uh, turn it over to Councilmember Rice. Well, thank you very much, uh, Councilmember Jawando. And um, I'm going to be brief because I really want to get to the program and hear from uh, some of the individuals in our community. Uh, I'll just address the elephant in the room. Yes, I do have braids. Uh, and I think, yes, thank you. I love, I love it. And, um, you know, it's interesting, uh, as, as Councilmember Jawando talks about um, uh, heritage, uh, in, in tradition, uh, it is oftentimes that in African culture and heritage, when you are embarking on new and, and, and uh, uh, momentous times, you actually change your hairstyle. And so uh, as I transition off of this council, uh, I, I certainly want to make sure that people understand um, my dedication and my commitment to my African heritage. And I'm looking forward to hearing from Sheikh because uh, I know my ancestry DNA. I know where I come from, and I know I come from Mali. And um, it is important uh, for us that we continue to destigmatize all of the things that are associated with African culture and heritage. Uh, the simple fact that a person may wear a dashiki or wear uh, some African clothing does not mean that it's they're trying to make a statement or they're trying to do something or that a person that has braids or dreadlocks in their hair that also evolved from Africa. Just look up uh, our great uh, emperor uh, Haile Selassie and you'll find out a lot about uh, dreadlocks and where they actually originated from in Ethiopia. Um, but it's all of these kinds of things that I think is important for us to make sure that we're reminding folks uh, when it comes to celebrating heritage and realizing that if we are true to accepting differences, if we are true to saying that we don't treat people differently because of where they come from, how they look, how they speak, then all of those things that are different are just different. And there's nothing else that changes anything about those individuals because those things may look or sound or appear different. And it is incredibly important that we also recognize the great entrepreneurial spirit that we see. And that's why I'm so happy that the folks we are, that we are honoring today are all entrepreneurs in their own right. Uh, because we know how strong uh, our immigrant population has always been. In fact, we know uh, the great work uh, and the strength of Africans when it came to dedication. It's the reason why they were stolen from their country. You don't steal labor if you don't think that it's going to be good labor. Folks knew about the ethic that we had when it came to work, which is the reason why we were stolen from our continent and brought here to the United States. So it is no surprise that the folks who immigrate here are very hard workers and continue to strive to be successful in their own right. And so we'll be highlighting that today. When I had the opportunity to go to Gondor, Ethiopia with our sister city trip, uh, I got to see that entrepreneurial spirit firsthand in Africa. I got to witness uh, the great work that continues uh, and it inspired me. It inspired me because it is incredibly important for us to continue to raise awareness when it comes to some of the challenges that we put before our immigrant community making sure that we continue to lift up their culture while at the same time ensuring that they can continue to be successful in their own right. And it's one of the reasons why partnering with our Department uh, of Agriculture, setting up our immigrant farmer uh, program so that we can ensure that so many who are so strong in their own home countries with agriculture can do the same thing and take advantage of the agricultural reserve that we have right here in Montgomery County. 
you know, Africa is the second largest and second most populous continent in the in the in the world, and 15 percent of uh, those uh, immigrants from Africa call uh, home Montgomery County. And I think that the rich uh, culture and diversity of languages that we see, uh, the traditions that we see, all make us incredibly fortunate as a community. Uh, from art to music to dance to food and fashion, uh, really is the things that enrich our understanding of what it is to have a diverse community and one that represents our African community and how much it can continue to share with us. So with that, I'll turn it over to our folks to run the video. Uh, but do want to encourage you to make, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to turn back to council member, uh, to council president. I'm sorry. No, no worries. Uh, but, but, but did just want to say in closing that I think that it is incredibly important for us to make sure that the opportunities that we have to continue to bridge more connections with Africa, not just with Gondor, Ethiopia, but with other countries, uh, throughout Africa is something that will benefit our community and Africa as a whole. So with that, back to you, Mr. President. Thank you so much, Councilmember Rice. And I'd be remiss not to acknowledge uh, the incredible work that Councilmember Novara has done as the first immigrant to serve on this body. Uh, she uniquely understands what we're about to talk about in this video, and so it's more than appropriate to have her speak before it starts. So Councilmember Novara. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. It is such an honor, and I'm just, I'm really filled with a lot of emotion because this will be my last uh, commemoration here sitting on this dais. Uh, <clears throat> but I just wanted to say a few, a few things. Um, one of the things that inspires me the most when we bring together the African diaspora to this chamber is the fact that to me this is a representation of unity. A lot of times when people talk about Africa, they seem to refer to it as, a, as if it's just a country. It is a vast continent with extraordinary history, with different, different languages, different tribes, different history, different traditions. And it is so important not to reduce it to just that one sort of label, just as many of us who are immigrants, when we come to the United States, all of a sudden we have to learn all these new labels, right? So when I came to the United States and I realized I was gonna stay, all of a sudden I was labeled Latina. Uh, and, and, and I always have this conversation with my daughters about what it means to, um, to really be a representation of so many different uh, cultures and ethnicities, you know, and speaking of the, uh, of the I'm always fascinated by this whole thing about, you know, genetic uh, uh, breakdowns and everything like that. And, and, uh, and I always get these updates. And so the last update had Cameroon, Congo, Western Bantu peoples, Nigeria, Northern Africa, Benin, Togo, and Senegal as part of my DNA because I am absolutely a total mix of what it means to be a Caribbean, Latin American person having indigenous blood, having African blood, and having mostly Iberian Peninsula blood. And my husband, of course, is from Haiti. So our daughters, we had to raise them understanding that as human beings, we are very expansive and that we don't have to uh, put it, be put in a tiny little box, but we can absolutely embody all of these different extraordinarily powerful civilizations within us. And so to me, that's been very important and it has guided my work and I wanna thank some of the people in the audience, you know, who I've had the opportunity to work with very closely. I see Jeru Bande, who is an extraordinary asset to our county. Fatmata Berry, who has been amazing as, as a woman leading in so many areas. Danielle Karoma, Mashur Salu, right here in our own uh, council um, uh, family. But I do want to take a, um, a moment for a point of personal privilege, and I want to congratulate my chief of staff, Ikari Ikeloa, also known as Roland. Stand up, Roland, stand up. Because Roland Ikeloa, who hails from Nigeria, just received the James Curry Society's Lifetime Achievement Award from the African Studies uh, Center of Oxford University for liter literary criticism. So he's not only my chief of staff, a friend, but he is a renowned person throughout the world uh, in his in his extraordinary work in in in, in liter, literacy and and in literature and you know to me it just speaks to who we are in this county right that we have such wealth 
of extraordinary talent. And so many people who come from so many different places come here and choose public service and choose entrepreneurship and choose so many different things. And indeed, it is what makes this place such a magnet for so many and why we have such high quality of life. So thank you all. Thank you, Council President, Council Member Rice, and Council Member Jawando for continuing the tradition and, um, and for really having an opportunity. I also want to say I am so sorry I can't join you for lunch. I have to, a doctor's appointment, but I, I'm sure Roland will pack me a little plate or something. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I was looking forward to the food. <laughs> I know he's going to eat it all. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, let's air the video. The United States is home to a thriving African diaspora that has made important cultural contributions. Each one of us has a different story, but we've all come to call this nation our home. I'm Mirsha Salu, a Montgomery County resident originally from Ethiopia. And this African Heritage Month, I take you on a journey to explore the influence African fashion, food, music, dance, and art has had in our county and nation overall. According to the Migration Policy Institute, as of 2019, there are over 3 million African immigrants living in the United States. Most of us leave our countries for familial ties and economic betterment. With us, we bring our diversity, talent, colorful clothes, flavorful food, and vibrant music. And with the rise in African immigrants, the African culture has become more prevalent and global. We start with fashion. Over the last few years, the demand for African attire has soared. We no longer have to look for festivals to get African clothes. We've seen stores sprouting in malls all over, making getting our hands on the colorful fabrics a lot easier. Busai Yoshitu is a Nigerian-born fashion designer and owner of Bibire, a clothing line specializing in African attire. She knows that her pride for her culture and heritage is something that she'll never lose, which has led her to what she does today. BB Ray, it actually is huge. It means when you're born into wealth. If you've been born good of good heritage, you can't use money to buy good heritage. You have it and you have it. When Busayo first started her business in Germantown, she mostly had African customers. But over the years, she saw her customer base becoming more diverse and noticed the mounting excitement for African fashion in the community. If there's ever a need or a moment to be proud to be African, this is it. The movie Black Panther came out and the people were like, wow. And um, people are now finally realizing that, oh my God, Africa is not just this poor continent. They started looking at the fashion and they're seeing designers come from Africa and design fantastic things. When I went to um, New York Fashion Week and we used African fabric, the Ashoke. And people were like, what? This is from Africa? Yes, it's from Africa. So people really, really are really feeling Africa right now. And I feel like in a few years time, so you probably go to Mesa's and you see African dresses there. African food is another area that has gained popularity over the years. African cuisines have been developing from home cooking to a more modern approach by chefs who are working to bring in new techniques that are adapted to traditional fares. This approach has helped African food find its place on the world culinary stage and shape American cuisine. Marinate the, the steak. Hatib Jouf, a Gambian native, is determined to introduce West African flavors to his community with some improvisation and adaptation. He invited me to his kitchen to learn how to make chew, a West African delicacy. We have a very, very rich culture and uh, our hospitality and our food is vast. Africa as a continent is bigger than the US. I always talk about that. We also have a very, very rich cuisine that, you know, when you try it, you become used to it and like it. We do use a lot of natural stuff, tamarind, sorrel, which is hibiscus, which I um, incorporate in my baking just to Africanize the desserts that I offer in-house. Hatib opened his restaurant, Masakunda, in 2019 as a solution for the West African fine dining experience the region was lacking. And Tacoma Park? gave him the sense of home he was searching for. There is no other place in this world that I would have ventured this establishment. This is the place that I know 
that um, is diverse in culture, that people here are very, very curious. If I had to do it again, this is where I would open the store. What I was looking for was a place that can actually harbor my business. But what I found is a locality that actually resembles where I come from, the sense of community. In addition to the food he serves, Hadib also wants to introduce the African culture through the many custom-made artifacts he handpicked from his homeland. His goal? To transport his customers to Africa for a full West African dining experience. Everything here actually has a story. And because I wanted to create a place that I would call modern Africa. You know, a place that represents the continent for what it is now, not what has been portrayed. African food is as diverse as its countries, and this immensely rich diversity makes African cuisines unique from region to region. Iman Musa, an Egyptian restaurant owner specializing in koshery, Egypt's national dish, noticed that there wasn't enough North African cuisine representation in the area, so she decided to do something about it. I decided to name the brand after the traditional dish because I wanted people to know what koshery is and I jokingly tell my customers now when you ever land in Cairo you know what to order for yourself um, but the origin of the word is the kitchri meal which is an Indian meal and this is a piece that I was very happy to discover this meal traveled from India to England and then uh, it went to Egypt and a lot of modifications happened to it and became the koshery bowl. Iman has seen her customers find a familiar taste in the dishes she prepares which she thinks has contributed greatly to the popularity of African cuisines. African food is on, uh, on the rise, uh, very popular. Egyptian, Egyptian food is now on the rise. We have several now Egyptian spots around the area. It used to be only New York. Now they're spreading out a little bit and other states around. So it is on the rise. People are realizing that those are very familiar flavors. The restaurant owners are breaking this fear of, oh, no one knows what Egyptian food is, so I'm not gonna make it and they're starting to introduce it to the market. So I'm really optimistic. To understand the origins of certain African dishes like the koshery, which was brought from Asia to Europe and then to North Africa, I met with food historian and writer Emily Beach, who spent decades studying African cuisines. The story of African cuisine is the story of what was there originally, what came through colonialism, what came through immigration, refugee situations also, and modernization and globalization. Emily explained that although each of these different countries have a distinct cuisine, when it comes to the broader regions of Africa, there are still lots of commonalities due to the environment and cultural influences. There are 54 countries in Africa. There are countless languages. Of course, it's not a monolithic cuisine, right? There is just diversity everywhere. In the North, you have countries, most people know, say, Morocco and Tunisia, heavily influenced from French colonialism. So you have some of the French names for dishes, classical French techniques, and so on, but then also Middle Eastern influence uh, with the spices, with the kind of stewy dishes, that's where you get tagine, that's where you get couscous, um, and it all kind of commingles together. On the east, you have more um, Southeast Asian and Indian influences. South Africa is probably the biggest hodgepodge because it was Dutch, English, some Portuguese, some French, also Indian. Uh, so that's where they get their curries from. And then West Africa obviously has huge influences from the Caribbean, from Portugal, from those kind of uh, the triangle trade between West Africa, uh, North America, and South America. African flavors have always had an influence on American cuisine dating back to the slave trade. This influence is even more widespread today, giving it a more prominent place. I think for a long time, because of our social history as a nation, it wasn't seen. Something that was produced, for example, Thomas Jefferson's, all of his cookery that's considered American food, was designed by uh, his African-American cook that had so much African influence in it in terms of the dishes that he saw. But it was kind of um, 
considered or received as American rather than from African heritage. So I think there was a long history of it being influential but not seen. Wherever there is African food, there is African music. Africa boasts a rich landscape of musical styles. From west to east, north to south, the African musical influence spans beyond borders and has been shaping music in the U.S. and around the world for centuries. Shikamala Diabati, a Grammy Award-winning musician from Mali, has made it his mission to explore the connection between America's traditions and his own griot roots. Over the course of his career, he's connected the musical instrument similarities between the two continents. Uh, when we're talking about the banjo, banjo, American banjo came from the Goni. That time, first, when I first came to America, they hear, because they already know the Goni, and they know oh, the Griot people play Goni, many people. The African music have a lot of power in America. So African music influence now all the world is a many strong, lot of power. Anywhere you go is a African music. Many things, even the blues, all came from Africa. African music calls for some dancing. Preserved and passed from generation to generation, these dances have remained as rituals and spiritual traditions, creating a basic vocabulary of movement common throughout the entire African diaspora. Michael Friend, artistic director and founder of Soul Emotion African Dance and Drum, has dedicated his entire career to making the cultural connection between America and Africa. It's my mission and it's the organization's mission really to sort of morph the lineage of Africa into what, who we are as African Americans and understanding what that means. You know, born in America, but you identify with the lineage from Africa. In our performances, what people see is they see a morph of understanding um, what they, you know, the cradle of civilization, the African connection through our performance, what we bring to it as African Americans, which is just this melting pot of all these different identities. So our inspiration is that of Africa, West Africa specifically, but we want to be able to identify ourselves in that as well. So people really get a sort of this morphing of who we are, who we understand uh, is our background and our inspiration going forward. Through his band's performances and their drums, Michael's goal is to teach the youth about their African heritage so they know where they're from and where they're going. The idea of the dance and drum when we go on stage is very important, especially for young people, because we want them to understand sort of that, that connection, that, uh, that power they carry just in their culture and their ethnicity. So it really helps to connect the dots. So I think for dance and drum, that's, that's the vehicle by which, through the music, through the arts, that we get there. We lead the charge. To experience Africa is to understand history and resilience. And no one expresses that better than a painter. In the heart of downtown Silver Spring, I visited the studio of Solomon Asfaw. Solomon, an Ethiopian-born painter, was inspired by the colors and surroundings of his home country. He's always wanted to tell his country's untold stories through his paintings. I grew up at the church, in the church, so um, growing up, uh, you know, watching those kind of paintings, you know, iconographic paintings. And I don't remember even when I started painting because since my childhood, when I used to paint, you know, the slums, you know, the shanty towns, the old roofs, the, the electric poles, and the hustle and bustle things, you know, uh, that crowdedness, the dirty things, you know, that uh, muddy things, you know. Uh, I see colors in that things and also yeah. stories. That's the hustle and bustle you were talking about. The hustle and bustle, yes, you're right. After he moved to the U.S., he expanded his work to include elements from his new home hoping to bridge the gap and connect his East African roots to American traditions. When you travel, uh, when you go anywhere, uh, it's still with you. So you add up something in, into it and it's kind of fusion. 
So also that creates something beautiful. Salomon sees a promising future for African art and artists, which he says has become more seen in the last few years. The time is for Africa, right? So now the African art became as like the music, the art is booming. The people are watching and a, a lot of co collectors are interested and buying artwork and these artists are becoming, you know, well known in big panels and big uh, art uh, shows. Uh, you see now a lot of African artists from Nigeria, Ghana, Ethiopia, all over Africa. We continue to share our stories from the clothes we put on our backs, to the kitchen of our homes and restaurants, to the music we listen and dance to, to the canvas that reflects where we've been and where we're going. Our culture lives on in the people who work every day to preserve our African roots. That was amazing. The quality of these videos, I'm telling you. I mean, I'm starving because uh, the food was like jumping off the screen. So great job, Michelle. Uh, so we will now hear from colleagues who will make brief remarks. I'll remind everybody that the only thing standing between us and some of that <laughs> delicious food uh, is the rest of this presentation. Wow. So please keep our comments brief, but we're going to start with uh, Councilmember Katz. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I, I heard you loud and clear about food. Um, really, what a wonderful video. And I noticed that Joe immediately turned to you and pointed to you, which he should have, but Joe deserves a round of applause as well. <laughs> You know, today is just another example of uh, why Montgomery County is a blessed place. It truly is. And, and uh, I'm someone who is a third generation Montgomery County uh, resident. Um, I've never moved more than three miles from where my parents were living when I, when I was born. Um, but my, I thank God literally uh, every day that my grandparents came thousands of miles to, from Lithuania, I was on both sides, my parent, both uh, my uh, grandparents from both sides, came thousands of miles from Lithuania to get us here today. And many, when they left, and they certainly did not have a good life in Lithuania when they left, many of my family's relatives, uh, who I really did not know, ended up in South Africa. But I am proud to say that one of my mother's cousins was appointed to the Supreme Court of South Africa. And to make that even more impressive, he was appointed by President Nelson Mandela. So I, I uh, am truly uh, honored to be with everyone today. And I'm truly uh, realize how fortunate we all are in, in Montgomery County. It's important that we celebrate our own culture, but it's probably more important that we celebrate our neighbor's culture as well. And you can maybe look at me and tell that I enjoy the music, and you can maybe look at me and tell I, I enjoy the festivals, but you certainly can look at me and say that I enjoy the food. And, and I, I uh, am so I'm going to stop this. I'm going to stop speaking so that we can actually get to something that I truly also enjoy. Thank, Thank you. you very much for all that you do for Montgomery County. Thanks. Thank you. I also uh, want to note uh, Congressman Raskin's district team is here. Kathleen Connor, thank you so much for representing Congressman Raskin today. Uh, next, we will hear from Councilman Reamer. Well, thank you. That was an amazing video. I, uh, uh, the quality was spectacular. The food, I could, I could almost taste it. I could imagine how it could taste. I, and I'm overdue on a visit to Matsukunda, uh, which is in my neighborhood, and I want to get back there soon. Um, I'm just so happy and grateful to be able to live in a community that has so many people from so many different parts of the world. And the African immigrant community is a big part of my neighborhood and my schools and the, the community that I love and cherish. And um, you know, my, my sons, is, as everyone whose parent knows, when your, your children's friends are, are part of your life, you know, and they're in your living room when you come home at the end of the day and they come over on the weekends. And many of my sons 
best friends are African immigrant, children of African immigrants. And uh, I enjoy that relationship and, and learning and sharing. Um, but the community also, also holds me. And I want to thank Jeru uh, for, after I was injured, I, I had a very dip, uh, significant injury a number of years ago. Um, and because I had traveled to Senegal uh, and, and to um, the Gambia a number of years ago, uh, I had a chance to share some of that experience with uh, Jeru. And uh, after I was injured, he, he came and he brought to me a, a, a dinner of yasa chicken. And that was a moment for me that made me feel just so um, supported and cared for and, and, and held not just by Drew and his wife who prepared the meal, but by the whole community. And I think that is what makes this county so special is the way that the communities um, are, are strong and, and work together to make all of our lives better. And uh, it, was, it was just a moment and a small example, but it's something that is, it's every day and it's in, in so many ways. So I'm really pleased to be able to celebrate uh, today. And uh, again, I wanna, I wanna thank um, everyone who has been part of this celebration today, but again, express my, my appreciation to be able to live in a community that um, is, uh, again, brings together people from all over the world and makes something so special and so enjoyable uh, to be part of. So thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Hunter. Great job, Merche, on that on that outstanding uh, video. <clears throat> um, it's it's a great honor to be celebrating African Heritage Month with all of our uh, my colleagues and all of our honored guests. I can just tell you how much personally I enjoy um, representing Silver Spring for 16 years in the General Assembly and uh, in the County Council and working with with uh, good friends like uh, like Giroux. Um Every year I learn so much and I really enjoy uh, working with so many residents on uh, individual concerns like small business grants and rental assistance and, and tenant concerns. We're gonna, we're, we've been talking about food and art and music, but I, I also just wanted to recognize and thank so many of you for fighting for a, not just a more culturally rich community, but a community with greater protections for people who really need it from their county government. I've worked with some of you in this room um, for Ezekiel's law to stop toddlers from falling out of our apartment windows recently uh, to, to uh, pass the Body Camera Transparency Act after one of our uh, five-year-olds was abused by a couple of our, our police, unfortunately, in East Silver Spring. Um, and of course, um, uh, uh, with Councilmember Branson on, on uh, an employment uh, non-discrimination law last year. So many of you have been such great activists to give us a stronger community, and so many of those laws have been written by Livu and Ludin, so, and managed by Selena. So thank you all for your contributions too, because we all celebrate our, our great cultural heritage here, um, but you all have given us stronger, lasting protections as well by working so closely with me and my colleagues, and that's, that's a real honor, uh, and I greatly appreciate uh, all of your contributions in that area as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, well said. Councilman Friedson. Well, thank you so much. I am so thrilled uh, to be part of this incredible celebration. Really uh, appreciate uh, your leadership, uh, Council President Albernaz and Council Members Juwando and Rice and all colleagues for putting this together. Thank you to the team. Thank you to Merche and, and everybody. Uh, our county is stronger because of our African immigrants. This council is stronger because of our African immigrants uh, who are part of our family, who are part of this team and part of our uh, community. Um, I, we talked about culture earlier this morning quite a bit, and uh, there's another saying about culture that to understand the culture, study the dance. To understand the dance, study the people. And that's true of dance, it's true of art, it's true of food, it's true of music. Uh, today we're talking about the people who make all of this culture uh, possible. Uh, and in many ways, it's not just a celebration of the African diaspora, which is so rich here in Montgomery County and in our uh, broader DC community, but it's a celebration of our community uh, itself, who we are and, and what we value. Um, your values are our values. And in so many ways, your culture is our culture. Even the aspects of our culture that we don't even think about are really yours uh, that we have uh, borrowed and in many ways taken 
uh, and uh, don't give enough credit. The banjo, as was talked about uh, earlier, uh, but it's more than the banjo. It's the food, it's the music, it's, uh, it's the fashion. Uh, it's so many aspects of what we view as ours is in many ways yours. And today is a celebration uh, to, in many ways, reclaim uh, what is yours and thank you and express our gratitude uh, for everything that you mean to enrich the fabric of what makes Montgomery County such a special place, your entrepreneurial spirit that we're celebrating in many ways uh, and, and the culture uh, that really is part of that vibrancy and that dynamism. I was at the uh, Ethiopian Day Festival uh, recently, uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, with many friends uh, who are here uh, today. And I can't think of a better celebration of what makes Montgomery County such an incredible place. The, the culture that we saw, not just in the booths on display, but in the crowd of thousands and thousands and thousands of people descended uh, in Silver Spring at the Civic Plaza. It was why we build Civic Plazas literally in that uh, in that uh, moment there. So I'm just so proud uh, to be a part of this celebration, so proud to consider you friends. Uh, Giroux was mentioned uh, earlier. Giroux is my personal food consultant. Uh, we go around Montgomery County and he shows me all of the places I haven't yet tried uh, and need to. Uh, and so I appreciate uh, that, appreciate all of you and look forward to this great celebration. I've got to say, uh, I'm hungry uh, watching that video as uh, colleagues are as well. So I'll yield back to you, Mr. President. Thank you. I am too. All right, colleagues, we're going to uh, gather in front of the dais, read the proclamation and invite the guests who are going to make presentations of their own after we read the proclamation. All right, this is in alphabetical order. So, uh, Proclamation of Montgomery County, Maryland. Whereas September is African Heritage Month, which recognizes and celebrates African achievement and educates community members about the many cultures across the African diaspora. And whereas, Montgomery County is the first county in the nation to proclaim the month of September as African Heritage Month, as we should be. And Montgomery, is it my turn, guys? Yeah. Uh, I'm a, I think I'm after freezing. Whereas, <laughs> whereas with 54 countries, all with different cultures, languages, dances, and rituals. The African culture and identity is vast and diverse. And? Montgomery County is home to a large African population, making up 15% of the overall immigrant population in our community. Whereas we recognize African community members for their ongoing achievements and their contributions, to our county's diversity with their traditions, values, and history, and... Whereas the Montgomery County Council's second annual African Heritage Month commemoration theme is the African influence in Montgomery County and the United States, and... Whereas this year's commemoration highlights the influence that African art, dance, fashion, food, and music has, acro has across the nation and within our community, and? Whereas, during this African Heritage Month, we not only celebrate the culture of Africa, but we also learn about its history to understand where it all began, and? Where, and whereas, we recognize the rich mosaic that is celebrated during African Heritage Month as a way of pre preserving the past, linking to the present and educating future generations. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the County Council of Montgomery County, Maryland, hereby proclaims September as African Heritage Month, presented on this 13th day of September in the year 2022. Okay, I got it. Great. And now, 
Councilmember Jawander will introduce our speakers. All right, here we go. And I'm glad everyone came up to the front so I could see people. It's, thank you for doing that for me. <laughs> um, our first speaker, uh, and we have a couple that come forward, and I know Councilmember Rice will be a part of this as well. Dr. Michael Mills, the Vice Chair of the Montgomery County Sister Cities Program. Uh, and we also have uh, Fatmata Berry, an attorney and newly minted chair of the African Affairs Advisory Group. Uh, and, and when she was slumming it, a former member of my staff, um, but uh, really proud to hear from both of them and uh, appreciate each of you to bring brief remarks in that order. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the Montgomery Sister Cities Program, it's my honor to celebrate African Heritage Month. Uh, we do a tremendous job with Sister Cities celebrating the heritage as Council Member Rice spoke earlier about our trip to Ethiopia. It was just uh, a reaffirmation of what we need to do as a people to support our African family and it's just a pleasure to represent sister city so thank you thank you everyone thank you council Majuando and the wonderful council i want to say thank you to everyone for being here african heritage month obviously represents and speaks to us as an african people in this county as the second fastest growing immigrant population this is a real honor. Um, and I want to take the time to thank um, our county executive for making the third Saturday of the of September Pan-African Festival Day over at the Civic Center. So every year now we'll be having it there on the third Saturday. And I want to take the time to give a special thanks to Councilmember Joando, to our own first immigrant ever represent us on the county council for um, the advocacy and the fight for us to have our own um, um, uh, liaison for this huge continent in this county. And I want to introduce our vice chair. She's my vice chair for the African Affairs Advisory Group, newly mentored, um, Mona May. And to recognize the two first, first representatives um, for the African Affairs Advisory Group that were um, uh, uh, appointed to represent us. Um, our own, we call her Auntie Sophie, Sophie Cisse, and Moomin Barry, our own very, very, very um, strong advocate. So I want to thank everyone, my co-chair and the um, advisory group for cultural advice um, uh, committee. We put together the Pan-African Festival. And some of our members, if you can stand up, James, um, for the African Affairs Advisory Group and others if they're here. So thank you very much. I really appreciate this opportunity. You have a great day. All right, so we have a couple other speakers and so I'm very honored to introduce the King of Ningoni, uh, a renowned griot who imparts important past and present life lessons into his work. So, uh, Sheikh, why don't you come on up and give us a little... Thank you very, very much. I'm very proud to be here, proud of you. I'd like to say, Monday Mugo Sumara, yeah, Monday Mugo Sumara, Monday Galu, yeah, Masalubana, Kosolonjata Farala, Nimo Juma, Nimo Juma, and Tamabi, Monday Solonjata Farala, Kone Jara Sangranga, Kone Kasura Kone, Kone Jiba Minkone, Kone de la Kun Kamani, Kone Jiba Minkone, Kone de Kelemino, Kone Mujadan de Kelemino, Biba, Okele Baratia, Tauku la Uragada, Fada Kodo la Ila, Yamin Tenimuju Kalabi, Mama, Alumayi. Echopi Mugumadi Mani Mugusrama Bariga, Ameriki Mugumadi Mani Mugusrama Bariga, Kafukui Mugulila Kutelala Abariga Marsai. Thank you, everyone. Now, you see, if we had had some uh, musical instruments as well, we would have had a party here. We got to make sure we do that next time. So. You guys know. All right, uh, next is uh, Michael Friend, who's an artistic director and dancer and founder of Soul in Motion, highlighting African dance, drums, and spoken word, and an accomplished musician, actor, and playwright. Michael. 
Well, thank you very much. Thank you to the council. And I started this group in 1984 and continue. We are a couple of years away from being in the county for 40 years uh, doing what we do. And that's, uh, I know that from a, a fact is a, an accomplishment in itself, being about the work. And um, I guess Sheikh sang a little bit. So there's a rhythm called uh, Sorsene, a song that goes with it. Bala fele kui. Bala fele kuna. Bala fele kuna yoma. Bala fele kui. And we honor one of our uh, inspirations that came from Guinea to teach us as African Americans. About 30 years ago, we lost uh, Kariata Kunti. Um, about 40 days ago, so we want to thank her, thank her spirit, thank her for being an ancestor and continue to bless us on the drums, the dance, and all that we do um, here in Montgomery County. Thank you. And next, we're going to hear from Iman Musa, a chef, a culinary pioneer who introduced unique, healthy, and delicious Egyptian food to our area. So, Iman. Oh. oh. Okay. All right. So we'll celebrate, celebrate Iman, and um, we'll move on to Hatib Jouf, who's a chef also, a local Tacoma Park gym, incorporating West African traditional elements throughout his restaurant. So, Hatib. Wow. I thought I was going to come here and just blend in. I was not ready for this at all. I'm not very good at giving impromptu speeches. But I thank all of you for being here today and letting us be a part of um, your world. Um, this is um, a dream almost true. We're getting there. And um, when I was asked um, to participate, I hesitated because I was going through a rut. Um, in the industry that I'm in right now, we are just recovering from the remnants of uh, the pandemic. And um, I had a lot to do in terms of staffing myself. As we speak right now, I have to close my store to be here because I'm understaffed. But this event itself is so important to me. And coming here to see familiar faces, those who have eaten at my restaurant, and those who actually have known from my childhood, Mr. Jero Balde, who's a very good friend of my uncle. They went to school together in the Gambia. And <laughs> she's my family member. You know, I didn't even know she was going to be here. So in and of itself, I feel at home. And I hope that um, this would become something that we can all learn from and live and enjoy and hopefully lay a path where others can come in and experience what we are experiencing right now. It is all for the good. And I think uh, Montgomery County um, is an example of what America should look like. It isn't perfect, but like I said earlier, we'll get there. I thank all of you very, very much for letting us be part of you. Thank you. And last but certainly not least is a man who loves fashion, uh, Busehu uh, Shitu, who is a fashion designer, fashion icon, interweaving traditional African wear with contemporary ready-to-wear, connecting past to present while honoring her Nigerian heritage. Let's give it up for, you're going to start seeing her designs at some of the Met Galas coming up soon, I'm sure. Come on, Busehu. Thank you, everybody, for having me. I will probably have one heels if I knew I was coming to talk. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to say anything. I just thought I would just sneak in it, sit down, and then sneak back out. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate this. Um, when Michai contacted me, I was like, um, so I'm being seen because I was just doing my thing. You know, I love fashion. I sleep dream fashion. So I was just doing my thing. I didn't know anybody was seeing me. So for her to have contacted me and then said it was about African Heritage Month, and I am proudly African. Like, I love being Africa. So <laughs> thank you for this. Um, I just want to put it out there. If you ever want to live in the US, choose Maryland, and then choose Montgomery County. We can't close it better than that. Let me turn to our council president, though. <laughs> all right. That was amazing. Let's get together for a picture, and then we will adjourn, and all our invited guests are invited to the fourth floor for a lunch reception. So let's get together for a picture. And anybody who is here for this would like to be in the picture, please come on down. And please save me some food or bring me a plate, somebody. <laughs> <laughs>